Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Garthwaite. Hi, and I'm Carla Garrick, and I was waiting for that beat, so now I gotta be three, two, two one. one, two syllables. Yeah. I go. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Manch Talk. Tammy is cranky, so we're yeah, just going to. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not really cranky. I'm just like, I mean, I was out snow blowing for a while, which we bought an electric snowblower, which I, not electric, a battery operated snowblower. Okay. Um, partially because our big snowblower doesn't want to start, uh, and now it's uh, getting it to some place is not worth it. So we bought a l smaller, still big, still 21 inch wide, I think, um, battery because we have a battery powered mower, battery powered chainsaw. We're very happy with the whole cobalt line of battery operated things. It works pretty good. Did you hear they discovered the world's largest lithium deposits in Maine? In Maine? Yeah, That's I was like, weird. whoa, now we got it into Elon. That's weird. <laughs> right? No, I didn't see that. I'm not That's sure, 100% sure if it's actually the world's largest, but, but I found large. it really, really oh, interesting, interesting, right? So the lithium mines, which, you know, are not as green as people no, like to no, think. No, um, no. But no apparently mine. they're not going to let them mine them or something. So fascinating. You know, honestly, the whole time in the economy, we have these tensions between uh, over preserving and uh, just insanity. Everyone's, yeah, you know, everyone's funny. wrong except it's funny. me. When you're um, thinking about like preserving parks and trails and whatnot, um, as you know, I'm involved in the Friends Piscataqua River Park. And that's that made me just keep that in mind that there are trails. But there's a whole park that's not really developed or maintained or anything. Um, but I saw a Facebook bubble, you know, everything bubbles up on Facebook. And it was from my hometown. I grew up in Amsterdam, New York, which is up out, outside of Albany. And there was this park that, you know, for the lack of better explanation, we walked through a lot as teenagers. <laughs> and I seem to remember keg parties in the, in the woods. But um, I could be remembering that incorrectly. But the thing is, is that it was this, I remember it, but I don't because I mean, that's a long time ago. And I saw it bubble up and there were some old pictures and people were talking about it. And then it sent me down, you know, a rabbit hole looking up this park. And it was really a like well-built park in the, this guy started it in the thirties and it was a nature preserve and it was all these really nice things. And then like in the seventies, they said it just went to disrepair and all the buildings fell apart and blah, blah, blah. And then I found another thing about this zoo that used to be, and I was thinking about zoos and what happened to like small zoos. And then I started realizing a lot of it all happened, like the decline of a lot of these things that we all remember from childhood seems to all hinge around like the 70s like mm. every like there was a generation that stopped caring about stopped thinking they needed to be the caretakers so that's interesting, you know, because yesterday I was walking through the neighborhood with the dog and, you know, everyone who I, so we got a lot of snow, a lot. folks, like a lot, we like, like a foot more like snow. a foot. Yeah. yeah, I'd say there's probably a foot. Um, and, you know, and so that means the city has to adjust, you know, people are trying to clear the sidewalks. Here in New Hampshire, I think legally the way it works is you're supposed to clear your part of the sidewalk. Yeah. And everyone has this sort of individual responsibility. Now, from my perspective, that's supposed to work. However, it turns out a lot of people no. are just jerks. So you'll have a clean sidewalk, a non-clean sidewalk, a clean sidewalk. So all of us yep. end up with our dogs walking in the yep. street and the slush and hoping for the best. Yep. But, you know, I live on the west side near Notre Dame and near the, the church. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. I bet you even half a generation ago or definitely a generation ago, the all the church property would have been cleared. Yep. It would have been neat. Um, Tom would have come with a shovel and cleared it. Yeah, it just like there would have been like, you know, a, a response from the the church community to take care of it. So to your point, just, right? There's a break in there. And it's funny because then I just start thinking about different things that you're like, whatever happened to that? You know, you see like down in Rhode Island, remember Dan and I went for a walk once and there was some amusement park that was like, you can go through this park and there's still random bits of it. And you're like, what happened? And you know, the Benson um, animal, animal Preserve, which w lasted well beyond the 70s, but down in um, Hudson, there used to be an animal, like a zoo. And, but that kind of, I think, fell apart in like the 80s. So it's the same, the same generation. And so it makes me wonder if now people aren't starting to, um, maybe another, maybe people are starting to be more conscious of their, their the nature areas that they enjoy and taking better care of them, or at least I, I mean, I hope so. Yeah. But I mean, it's unfortunate because what happens is these places decline and then to get them back takes so much work where if other people had just been maintaining them, 
Right. I mean, you know, who knows what happened in the 70s? The federal government well, started to get bigger. Yeah. Nixon took us off the gold standard. Yeah. So that meant that, well, there you was know, the war suddenly, in Vietnam. you know, you there know, was the war. And so lot. people came back and they were, you know, war is never great. It's no. not, you know, doesn't make anyone happy. Mm -hmm. There are really no winners except maybe the uh, military industrial complex. Mm. Other than that, you know, everyone just suffers under war. And so... Who knows? But I'm hopeful that, you know, at least here in New Hampshire, mm. we have this whole new generation of people coming yep, in. Yep. It's folks who believe in, in, in private property, in actually community activation, taking responsibility for your own actions, all of that good stuff. So maybe we'll see a change or a reversal. Uh, just to close my thought on the church, you know, uh, we forget how big the whole you know child molestation shock story was there are a lot of catholic churches in new hampshire that mm -hmm. have had to close down yep. or are for sale there's one that's actually yep. for sale here on the east side and um and i was thinking about it this morning i don't know why how many movies are now made that are sort of like the cia mm. intelligence yeah. community Jack sort Ryan. Of propaganda yeah. Uh, stories and sometimes actually they quite cleverly make the hero sort of an anti-hero yeah. that's no mistake either but I was thinking this morning we don't see that many movies anymore about investigative reporting about the people mm. breaking the stories to be like those all those movies at one stage where it was like uh, people taking on big pharma or people taking mm -hmm. on you know the corrupt uh, environmentalists or like yep. all these things. And I was like, that's interesting because I think it's because we've moved away from actually holding people accountable mm -hmm. when they do crappy yep. things, you yep. know? And it's become really hard to sue these people. I'm optimistic. I mean, uh, Robert Jr., right? So which one is Robert, uh, uh, Robert Kennedy, Kennedy Jr., Jr., right? So he runs the Children's Defense Fund, yep. and he's been doing work on actually vaccine harm and big yep. pharma harm and, like, all these things. And so, of course, it is coming out now yeah. that there's a lot of shade. Well, there's a lot. I think, <laughs> well, I think there was just too, just like we've always said, there was too much rush to push a product that was basically from one large corporation um, without testing it. And that that initial overreaction, that initial push, you know, it was one thing. But then to continue to keep pushing the boosters with without still having done the research. Like the first panic, okay, that, that like, I'm not saying it was okay, but. I'll give them a little bit of a pass. Well, you can but the, panic, you know, but you can't mandate your panic, right? right? You right. can't actually go, hey, bodily autonomy, i.e. how you own yeah. and, and control your own corpus, has now been given over to this other nebulous people who well, now say, I own your body and you got to put this in your body. I'm just glad. So the mandates from the start were bananas. Mm -hmm. They are... Uh, there, there, I mean, Tammy, there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of weird stuff. stuff I, really, coming I, out. I was saying, I don't know if I said this on the show last week. I, do, I really sincerely do wish that, and I don't expect it to happen. You know, you do hear a lot of news reports, and I, sometimes I try to remind myself that, you know, are we all, we are reading in our own bubbles in a way because there is no real news. So the only thing you're seeing is what you're choosing to see in a way. Right. So um, there are a lot of reports and I have, we have mutual friends who post a lot of um, instances where there are way too many people dying from cardiac arrest. It's not a normal, it's not normal. Now I'm going to be object, I'm going to be like, play devil's advocate and say, I would hope that they would be tracking See, and this saying, is the Bob, this is what the problem is. Because if Bob died... Because died, if they had the COVID calendars from the start. So all we're saying is if everyone is acting um, Honest, up honestly, front. up front, and without either nefarious intentions or actual desires to mislead the populace, then it is not unreasonable to say that if you were doing this over here 
to count every COVID death, which, you know, we said from the start was being vastly mm -hmm. overcounted. People were dying with COVID, Instead but they were like COVID. 95 years old with like, you know, no heart, no blood, <laughs> no, you know, like just, just, it was, right. it was mal, mal, mal information yes. from the start. But be it as it may, if you were tracking it this way, we could track over there, to track. then can we please also track it over here to look at information? Well, because I look at it this way. Okay, I'm seeing all these reports. You see it, the football player who dropped, who oh. fell on the football field. I mean, a lot of these people are healthy, healthy athletes, yes? Okay, so time out with that Hamlin. Yes. Hamlin, whatever. I don't know yeah. anything about American rugby, football, whatever. <laughs> but did you see on Sunday, they claimed that this man who definitely at least had his heart cracked yeah. showed up at whatever the team's thing was he was photographed videotaped in a golf cart with backlit with a hoodie on and a mask and sunglasses walked to an elevator where he was filmed from behind and it was so ludicrous and then stood in the box and was waving and then everyone was like oh he did his his signature heart thing okay so i saw all of that and i was like that's ridiculous. That's yeah. You can't tell if it's that person. Right, I mean, right. So I actually tweeted out and I said, hey, does anyone have footage where you can actually see if, if this is the him. guy, right? There is none. So right. then my question Why becomes, are the, what was the purpose? Are you either trying to prime the, the people who are critical thinkers like me to call it out and, and say, then oh, you can go, ha, okay. ha, and then later you have a photo and you say it is? Or is it literally someone testing how much... B.S. Are people willing well, to eat? So think about, like, ser in all seriousness, let, think about these uh, these people who are dying with, from um, various heart-related things. If someone, which I'm not confident is if this is happening, was tracking and saying, okay, you're a 35-year-old male, you're, you know, this weight, like, just general health, you got the vaccine, you got the boot, whatever you got, like, let's know what you got, and then also, and or, did you have COVID and when? Because we don't know, and the, and it's we don't even know if the COVID infection is, plus the vaccine or, is, creates well, some kind or of is like it, or weird is it thing. just the COVID vax? Right. Is it just the COVID virus? It could. I mean, they're trying to spin it that no, way. No, I don't think I don't that's going to hold muster. Either, but I mean, but show us some data, some real scientific data that says, well, out of this, you know, these thousand people over the past year who have died of unusually, you know, out of place cardiac deaths, we can see that 80% of them contracted the COVID virus. And we can see that eight, not 80% of them had you know, the original vac vaccine, and then 20% had booster, you know, and whatever. Right, we could so that at least some you could, actual information. I, you know, I don't know, was it, is it the virus damaging people, in which, vi which, so, which, which variant was it the, you know, like, right. because that would be nice for people to know. Like it's that initial variant, well, you didn't get it till 2022, so you're good. Right. So uh, to your point about do we live in echo chambers and bubbles? So I've been very mindful about that maybe for the past year. Mm. I've really gone into my social and I've been trying to follow other people mm. and stuff. Too. And so one of the cool things that has, I don't know if it's new on Twitter, but it's new <laughs> to me, is these Twitter spaces. And what this is, is basically they, they uh, someone will get together with some thought leaders and then they have a, a, a appointment, a meeting time, and then everyone can just sort of pile in. Only the invited speakers can speak yeah. and then other people can listen. So I found it really cool because I'm like, oh, so I'm it's like a Twitter from, Zoom. Yeah, kind of, but you don't see anyone, you only hear them. Yeah. And, and anyway, so I've been sitting in on some of those and it's been interesting because it's generally, I would say it's maybe the younger guard, like the, the 30 something mm -hmm. investigative reporters and their doctor friends and stuff. And they seem mostly the ones I've been listening to have been more. Um, I might say like lefty, but open to actual data, right? right? Because I think the point is, even though people say that all of this was politicized, I, again, never made one decision because I'm a member of a political party. Oh, you mean you didn't go I, to a Manchester GOP meeting and they told us not to get vaccinated? Okay, that, that didn't right? really happen. You know, so, just, so, so, that's kind of what some people would have you believe, though. So in this Twitter spaces, in one of them, there was this conversation and there were two doctors and the one was 
older, probably in his 50s. He seemed like, you know, a little cynical, kind of, you know, more on mm. my page, right? And then there was this younger doctor. Um, and so the younger doctor just kept repeating. People were asking him what information would he need in order to change his views on vaccines and the potential of vaccine harm, uh, the excess deaths and everything. So he kept repeating in, in, in almost a programmed yeah. way. He said, I need a study from a reputable uh, magazine, right? A reputable journal that's peer reviewed, that includes clinical data, and that um, uh, th uh, and that concludes that right. that is the case. So this older, more cynical dude was like, "Okay, so do you know about this study that came out in the past two weeks? It was published in Vaccine. Vaccine is a peer reviewed, a reputable journal. It took." All the clinical data that was submitted from Pfizer and Moderna to the CDC for their original, hey, here's the information. Now, remember, that information actually included them eliminating the control group and taking everyone who got the placebo, which would have been how we match whether this is safe or not, yeah. and injecting them. That was the data that they actually used to make their decisions, right? So they brought out this, this uh, study. It's peer-reviewed in a reputable thing that finds that when you look at risk-benefit analysis based on Pfizer and Moderna's own submitted data and some information that came out from Freedom of Information Acts, right? So some of the stuff they were actually trying to hide, the risk Benefit analysis is it is net negative, yeah. meaning the vaccines cause more harm than they do to solve any of the problems, which means anyone should now be on notice. And if they proceed, especially the colleges, yeah. these colleges that are mandating vaccines for their students, I swear to God, I'm like making my life mission to like, destroy Harvard's endowment just for the sake of it. For every person who ever said to me, I went to Harvard. <laughs> All right, that being said, so this doctor, they present this information to him in the spaces right. after he twice said, this, this is, is what, what I, I need. need. And he was just like, nope. And they were like, can we send you the report? I shared it on my Twitter maybe like a, a week ago yeah. or whenever it was. So you can find it. I'll maybe reshare it after this. Okay. And I was just like, so it's this programming. And we are actually, that is a really, really hard bar yes. to cross, right? Because people have just been told this thing over and over and over and over again. And so I don't know how we nudge people, but I feel like the damn wool is break yes i do i agree and i just I, i'm in the same boat you know like you you see certain people that you know that were that did get the vaccines and got the boosters and th looked at us like we were crazy you know and being just obstinate and jerks and whatnot and there's times where i'm just like i could say no i'm not going to say anything because you'll figure it out eventually well and the thing is i think you know it's not all or nothing right so first of all i've never wished harm on anyone mm -mm. my positions were always the position of i think there's trouble and i'm trying to warn as many people mm -hmm. as possible well and just right? because you're just because we encourage people there if there had been some credible definitive information that said that you must take this vaccine to prevent this or you're going to die from this virus but that never that wasn't there and then it never came about and the data that they were sharing saying run it's scary it's scary still wasn't showing what they wanted you to believe but people but also, believe what they want to believe the other thing and this is a criticism i get all the time and it drives me sort of bat crazy, crazy um is you know people think oh people were just like uh, like i'm obstinate for obstinate sake sometimes no, i just, can be but not in that instance right and and I actually don't think I am because I come from a family of stubborn people and I feel like it was something I tried to develop as a yeah. known sort of factor. So I just try to be very like, you know, rational and, and lawyerly and be like, yep. here's evidence, yep. here's evidence, let's, you know. So this notion that people were just obstinate, no. You know what a real pandemic doesn't need? 
24-7 propaganda. Yeah. So the point is, if people were actually dropping dead on the streets, like that one video you saw that one time on repeat from Wuhan, that's propaganda, guys. Yep. Um, people would follow the measures. The reason why there was this insane uh, pushback from thinking people was what you're saying is nonsense. What you guys are presenting to us is not true. We are not going to listen to you because you are just making <laughs> stuff up. All right, shifting gears. Shifting. I'm loving your shift. <laughs> um, you said you brought something about right to work. Right to work, yeah. Right to know. Yeah. Um, I, I brought stuff, but mine can wait because mine's not. Okay, and, and, and honestly, I didn't bring all my printouts, okay. but we I was up at the State House last week. We testified on several right-to-know bills. I think the big deal one and the one that folks back home might care about is we're trying to introduce a penalty if you don't get the information that you're requesting. Yes. So In we, a reasonable, timely... Time, right. So... so we talk on this show a lot about incentives and how incentives matter because they actually help guide people. Now, we're unfortunately in a time in the world where almost every incentive is misaligned. Yeah. Like we're rewarding the wrong things. Like you can't bring out a novel vaccine that no one has ever used before, force people to take it and then be like, oh, by the way, <laughs> like we're, we're, we're not standing behind this product. If this kills, you know, literally, if this kills the whole world, we eh, get SOL folks. So, so that's a misaligned incentive. So in New Hampshire, there is no penalty if people don't actually conform to the right to know laws. Now in New Hampshire, we have uh, article eight of the New Hampshire constitution says pretty much you, if you're in the government and we ask for something, you should give it to us. Um, somewhere over the last 10 years, this disconnect has happened where uh, departments and the municipalities seem to think it's an act of war if someone yeah. asks How dare you for ask information. Me. And so there's, there's this pushback where people just don't want to give data. And I can give you a very concrete example. I had I'm a listening. Fascinating, I'm just thinking. I'm going to look something up while you're... Fascinating conversation with um, a, a, a homeschooling activist yesterday. And she called to ask. She said, you know, we record our Zoom calls, mm -hmm. right? And then afterwards, we create meeting minutes. And what the municipality and what people from the school board uh, committee people yeah. are, are now advocating is the second you put up the minutes, you destroy the, the video. video. And why? And I was like, why would we do that? First of all, we've already in invested the cost. Second of all, it's just another record. Yep. So why wouldn't one keep it, right? So what this bill proposes, and the ACLU supports it, the uh, First Amendment organizations all support it, the newspapers support it, freedom people support it. So it's one of those that hopefully everyone will kind of go, except deep state government people don't like it, right? So all we're saying is, if you filed a right to know request and you were rejected for some reason and you decide I am actually going to sue them, right? Mm -hmm. Which, or go to the ombudsman, which is like six months late yeah. and meh. Anyway, um, then if in a court of law, they then find, oh, you really should have disclosed this information four years ago when they asked for it originally. Then in those scenarios, instead of me who sued to get the information that I was entitled to, having to bear my legal costs, yeah. then the, uh, ad, you know, the administration or the municipality or whoever was responsible on the other side then has to bear your attorney fees. Hmm. And so the thinking, and honestly- I mean, that's not terrible. Well, that's how, that's how, I mean, that's the same premise as um, saying if you bring a frivolous lawsuit right. and you're found to be wrong, why should the person you sued, I mean, there's this guy in Manchester, I'm not going to mention his name, and if he watches our show, I always feel so, so bad for you. There's some legal case. He's on day 1400 of this hmm. legal, he can't make it go away. Like, and there's like, no, from what I can see, there's no reason that this is still going on. And it's absolutely insane that... 1400 days is many years no court case should go on for that many years it's yeah there's i mean every 
It's not. Our legal system is also very, very broken. Yes. So, uh, you know, but but we're hopeful. Actually, I think if this bill can pass, it'll be good for granite stairs, mm. right? And that's where we need to look at the, the 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 action and the direction that we go. Is when everyone goes, hmm. Actually, this does this isn't, solve this sounds a about problem. Right. right. Those are the ones, you know, and 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 let's do those because that actually benefits all of us. This partisanship really only benefits the state. When we figure out how to unify to actually fix changes that need to be fixed, that's actually where we add value to all, all of our lives. Um, I did want to talk uh, two quick things. Last week when we had, did our show, the court hadn't ruled yet. Um, the, a judge did rule last week that the city of Manchester could evic, evict the homeless encampment on Manchester and Pine Streets. They posted them. Um, they had until... I believe last Tuesday to leave. Um, I did drive by this morning. It is completely cleared out. That doesn't mean that those people went away. That just means that they went someplace else. Um, on a personal note, I've said this, and I don't. This isn't meant to be derogatory about homeless people, but um, if you have a shed it, way back in your backyard, or if you normally leave your garage unlocked, and, you know, I'm just saying. I, I'm being extra careful. I'm taking a look around the back of my property because I don't need to find some. I've, I've I, experienced I, people living in my sheds and things like that. I don't, it, you just need to pay attention to your own property. You, you're a perfect uh, example. Oh my God, I have a friend who lives on Manchester Street in a really beautiful old yep. house. Uh, and it, yeah, she was outside and she was like, well, she heard some rustling and then she looked and, and there was like in the bushes two of women house. pooping no. in yeah, no, the back of her okay. yard. Um, I also <laughs> wanted to talk real quick. We only got like two minutes. Um, so we had two snowstorms, as you mentioned earlier, about a foot of snow. Um, I'm going to go with the city is doing their best to clean up the snow. Um, I don't like the way we do snow emergencies. We had a snow emer overnight snow emergency last Friday, which seemed silly, or maybe it was last Thursday night. There wasn't going to be enough snow. Four to eight inches is not a reason to tell people they can't park on the street. But then um, Sunday into Monday, which was going to be a lot of snow, there wasn't one. So I, I see in the bubble, that is Facebook, um, a lot of people complaining about the narrowing of their streets and that they're, they're annoyed because their neighbors don't move their cars for the plows. And here is how parking on the streets in Manchester actually works. From December 1st to April 15th, you can park on the even numbered side of the street on even number months from one in the morning to 6 a.m. That's weird. Uh, December, February, and April. So that's not now. January, you park on the odd side of the street from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. So from 1 in the afternoon, that doesn't even make any sense. Um, so they're saying you can't... <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. No wonder people can't figure this out. Um, Is it a typo? Uh, it's everywhere. It says it's 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. I don't know where you are the rest of the day. Um, and then when they call a snow emergency parking ban, you cannot park from on any city street from 10 at night till 6 in the morning. There are... Um, emergency parking on West Arena. Is that the only is underutilized. West, it's the only parking lot that you can park in on in West Manchester. Um, you can go, go, you can sign up for alerts. Uh, just go to manchesternh.gov, search for snow alerts. You can sign up to get a text message, to get an email, and then those little blue lights that are on the traffic. There's just no reason why people should get, be having their cars towed if you are awake, yeah. ever. Just saying. Anyways, that's really all we have for this week. We're going to get more snow tomorrow night, Wednesday night, if you're watching this on Facebook. So just be prepared for that. And then, again, it's going to be in, like, the 30s and 40s most days. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday with more wonderful things to talk about. Um, maybe bail reform. We'll talk about that a little bit. That sounds like fun. That sounds good. That's all we got. Thanks, guys. Bye.